On this worksheet, we're going to call, solve a couple of solubility problems. We'll be starting with a problem asking us to calculate the solubility of calcium fluoride, CaF2. The first thing that I want to talk about is what is actually represented by the term solubility. This is a measure or a reflection of how much of the substance, in this case calcium fluoride, I'm just going to write that, how much calcium fluoride is dissolved in the water or um, dissociated, split apart into cations and anions. There are two different types or two different ways that we tabulate solubility. We have solubility, like this problem is asking. We also have something called molar solubility. So we do have to be a little bit careful, uh, pay attention to what the problem is asking us to solve. Solubility is in units of grams per liter. Molar solubility is in units of moles per liter. And in this, it is specifically referring to the grams of, in this case, it would be calcium fluoride, grams of calcium fluoride per liter of the solution, uh, or it would be moles of calcium fluoride per liter of the solution. To solve these problems, we need to use an ice table, and that means we need to start by writing a balanced chemical equation for the dissolving, dissociating of the calcium fluoride. Initially, the calcium fluoride is gonna be a solid. We're gonna place it into water. So I'm gonna write water underneath the arrow. It's not reacting with water, but obviously you need to have water in order to get it to dissolve in water. The calcium fluoride dissociates into its ions. The cation is the Ca2 plus calcium ion. And since it's in water, that ion is now aqueous. The other ion is the fluoride anion, F minus. And there are two of those fluoride ions. The reason that I know that there's two of these fluoride ions is coming from that subscript in the CaF2 molecule. So we're going to make an ice table from this balanced equation. Um, initially, like normal, we don't have any products. All that we have is calcium fluoride. But notice that the problem doesn't tell us how much calcium fluoride we have. We have no idea how much we have here. And that's going to be really normal for these problems. It's also going to be really OK. This is an equilibrium. So some of the calcium fluoride is going to dissolve and dissociate, but not all of it. We don't have any idea how much is going to dissolve. So like normal, we're going to use a minus x to represent the amount that actually dissolves. This is the solubility. So the solubility is being reflected right here in the ice table as x. Uh, on, the, on the other side of the equation, we're still going to keep using our x's, uh, plus x, and then also plus 2x. Oh my gosh, y is all of a sudden 2x? That's because of the stoichiometry here. We have two fluoride ions, which means we have two fluoride ions, which means um, our stoichiometry is 1 to 1 to 2. So you just got to be on the lookout for that. That's a little different than how we've done it before. And then down here in our very last um, row, the, the end, we're just going to do the math down each one of these columns. For here, though, we have really no idea what the math is. We don't know what we started with. Uh, we know we lost some of it. Also, we're still going to be making that assumption that X is super small. So we just have some amount here of unknown amount of CaF2 solid. For the calcium, we have X. And for the fluoride, we have 2X. And again, our goal is to solve for x. That is the solubility. So to solve for x, we're going to use an equilibrium expression. This type of equilibrium is called a KSP. SP stands for solubility product. The equilibrium expression is products over reactants, everything raised to their stoichiometric coefficient. So don't forget that guy. Leaving out pure liquids, leaving out pure solids. So we have our first product, Ca2+, our second product, F-, and that is squared. And then in terms of our reactants, because it's a solid, there's nothing to, to write in down here as a reactant. If you wanted to, you could write this as still as a fraction over 1, but usually it's just written like this with nothing on the bottom. Since this is a pure solid and it's not showing up in our equilibrium expression, uh, it doesn't matter that we don't have any idea how much we have because we actually don't need to know this number. We don't need to have this number in order to solve this problem. Uh, okay, so we're going to solve for x. We're going to plug in our KSP value. It's 4.0 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, for calcium, we're using x. For fluoride, we're using 2x. And then don't forget that that is squared. Now, I do want you to be a little bit careful here. This is 2x that is being squared, which means that the 2 is being squared and the x is also being squared, which makes it 4x squared. Altogether, this is 4x cubed. Sometimes students want to just only 
square the x. And that's not the case. You got to square the 2 as well. Now let's go ahead and solve for x. I'm going to go 4 times 10 to the minus 11 divided by 4. And then I'm going to take the cube root of that. And my x is 2.15 times 10 to the negative 4. Now the ice table default unit is molarity. So that means that th this is in units of moles per liter, specifically moles of CaF2 per liter. And since we're being asked to calculate solubility, which is in units of grams per liter, we just need to do one last conversion right here where we're going to convert moles of calcium fluoride into grams. We'll do this using the molecular weight of calcium fluoride, which is 78 grams per mole. Those mole units are gonna cancel. And this is now 1.68 times 10 to the negative two grams per liter. The next problem that we're going to solve is pretty similar. This is just one where we're dealing with solubility in the presence of a common ion. So we're looking at still the solubility of calcium fluoride, which means that our reaction is going to be very similar. CaF2 solid dissociating in water to produce Ca2 plus aqueous and 2F minus aqueous. So the same balanced equation that I used for the first problem, and we're gonna make an ice table again. So uh, still, initially, we don't have any idea how much calcium fluoride we have. We don't have any calcium ion at all. At this problem, we have a common ion. We have sodium fluoride. NaF is going to dissociate fully into Na plus ions and F minus ions. So this amount, 0 0.002 molar, that's gonna be our starting amount of fluoride. Now, I don't want you to get confused about the stoichiometric coefficient here. Um, when I'm filling in the 0 0.002, I'm basing that number off of this stoichiometry right here, the NaF dissociating to Na and F minus. This is a one to one to one stoichiometry, which means 0 0.002 is the amount of fluoride that we have. That's what goes into this equation. Now for this second chemical reaction, our stoichiometric coefficients are 1 to 1 to 2. This is where we need to actually be paying attention um, uh, to the coefficients. So once this reacts, we're going to have minus x plus x plus 2x. In equilibrium, we're going to have some unknown amount of CaF2. We don't know what it is. We have X calcium, and we have 0 0.0020 plus 2X of the fluoride. But again, we're assuming that X is a super tiny number, and that's just going to work itself out to be still be 0 0.002. What's the solubility? Again, we're being asked, what's the solubility? The solubility is always going to be reflected by X, so we need to solve for X. KSP is our product, Ca2 plus, times our other product, F minus, and that one needs to be squared because of its coefficient. The KSP value is 4, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 11, same value we used for the last problem. The amount of calcium is x. The amount of fluoride is 0 0.0020. And don't forget that it needs to be squared. So now we're just going to solve for x. 4.0 times 10 to the minus 11 divided by 0 0.002 squared. x is 1 times 10 to the minus 5. Again, remember that that's in units of molarity. So that's moles of calcium fluoride per liter, and we need to give our answer as solubility, which is going to be in units of grams per liter. So we convert down here moles of calcium fluoride into grams, 78 grams per mole for calcium fluoride. And our answer is 7.8 times 10 to the minus 4 grams per liter.